Hi, it's Meredith Marks, and we are live in Red Bank, New Jersey, with the Jersey boy himself, Mr. Frankie Valley. Is he here? Where is he? Have you seen him? I haven't seen him. Sherry? Anywhere. Sherry, oh, baby? Oh, there he is, that guy. Oh, with there the he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy, I know that guy. It's you. Love this guy. Love this guy. Okay, so we're going to put this here so that people can see you because you're so darn handsome and they don't need to see me. Okay. So, okay. It's Meredith Marks and we oh, are live in Red Bank, New Jersey it. with the ultimate Jersey boy himself, Mr. Frankie Valley. How are you? My dear uncle. Even though we're not blood related. <laughs> I we're, still we're, feel we're even closer. Than we're closer that, than that. You're my family, my whole life. So thank you for coming on my show. I'll, I'll always come on your show. <laughs> I know. So I want to talk to you about a couple of things. The touring differences between the '60s, '70s, '80s, and now. Uh, you know, obviously touring has changed over the years. Have you found it to get easier or more difficult? Well, the hard part is traveling. You know, touring is uh, is a is a part of the occupation, and if you understand that from the very beginning, then it's okay. Some people can't handle traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, traveling has gotten much more difficult because of lo a lot of the uh, political situations that are going on and terror and all the other things that, that go with it. That's the hardest part. It's nice when you go to a place and you stay for a week, but there aren't very many places that you do that anymore. Everything is a one-nighter. Right. So it's a continual situation of being on the road and doing one-nighters as opposed to going to a place and staying there for a week and settling in and getting to know the people who come to see you where it's it's not a, unfriendly it, you, it's almost as though you've become friends as though you're visiting them or they're coming out to see you and visiting you so there's a big difference because people feel such a deep connection to your music i mean you reach people the new generation you reach the older generation um, and they're they're very comfortable with you. It seems like, and I've been in your audience several times. There's that real deep connection where people truly love you. And do you feel that that just continues over the years? I, I think it's a it's a, a period of time that most of the music that was created in that period of time, and the artists that were involved in music in that in that era. Uh, are a different kind of audience than there is today. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it was much broader. There was also, in that period, a larger portion of adults who also liked the same thing that some of the younger people did. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have seen that dissipate as time has gone by. And some of the older people today don't relate at all to any of the new music. You and I talked about that in Cleveland two years ago. You and I sat and had dinner. And you asked me who I really liked. Remember that? Right. And I said, I like Bruno Mars. That's who I like. Yes. Because he's, he's real. It's, it's a real talent there. And then I said, well, what about some of the other stuff? And you... I don't know well, if you there wasn't your a response. whole lot of other you stuff. Very... You know, I'm, I'm even noticing there's been a big change in Bruno Mars mm -hmm. from two years ago to now. It's true. And I liked him better then. Not, I love his talent. I think his talent is brilliant. But uh, I think he communicated much better than than he is now. Yeah, maybe he's just taken a little bit of a different direction. Well, it's, it's, uh, everything is video and, and, and all performances of all the young people today. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no real touching the audience, uh, letting the audience get to really know you. 
beyond some video and, and, and dancing and all of that. So it's, it's different. Uh, and it was also different in the, in the days of, of Sinatra and, and Crosby and, and Dean Martin and Perry Como and all those singers of that period of time. Uh, so I think there is usually a gradual change as the different generations go by and the newer ones come in. So it's a different, it's a different ball game. Talk to me about when people come to your show, you have an incredible stage, meaning the people that stand behind you and beside you are all incredibly talented people. And you recently added in the past couple of years, the modern gentleman who really add a little something different to the show. If, if people came to see you, let's say in the eighties, like I did, as opposed to coming to see you now, what can people expect for those changes that when, if people haven't seen you recently? Well, they can either be pleasantly surprised or say, oh, I hate it. I wish it was like it used to be. I mean, uh, you know, you have to move with the time and progress. It's not a terrible thing. Uh, I think it's important to surround yourself with talented people. Uh, back in the day when we all started out, before there was any success, we were who we were, and we were a partnership, and we accepted who we were, and nobody could get rid, could get rid of anybody in the band. You know, so it wasn't nowadays. I mean, in, in my situation. I, I'm in a position where if there's something I'm not thrilled about, I could make that change. We couldn't do that before. Because we all had equal said. Right. We all had it to agree upon it. It's it's a lot easier, I think. Because sometimes with success, no matter how how much the people involved care about each other. When the success happens, instead of pulling them closer together, it starts to pull them apart. And everything is seen through a microscope. Mm -hmm. And you don't like that this guy is doing this and he's getting a little bit more attention than you are, or this guy is doing that, or, or whatever. So. Okay, over 40 years ago, you and Bob Gaudio, you had a handshake. Does that still hold true today, or was there ever any paperwork signed? Well, the only paperwork that was ever signed was at a point where, as we were getting older, an attorney came and said, listen, this is all terrific with this handshake and all that, but God forbid something happened to either one of you, you don't want families fighting with each other. So you have to kind of spell out what you have. But it's, it's, it's still the kind of an agreement that can be cut off by either party at any time either of us wants to. And we just have never found any need to do that. So here we are. Here we are. I know you had a very heavy hand in Jersey Boys, the musical. And we talked about that a couple of years ago. You asked me if I saw it. I have not seen the musical, but I did see the movie. And I waited to see the movie until after I saw you because I wanted to know your opinion on it first. Do you remember we talked about that? I said, I haven't seen it yet. Right. I wanted to know what you thought. I have never really seen the movie. You haven't seen the movie? <coughs> I saw uh, early renditions of before it was edited, I wasn't happy with Can with you tell me why you weren't happy right. with it? Well, because I, I looked at the movie as being a totally different vehicle than the play was. And, and the play, because it was a play, you were experiencing a live performance. Mm -hmm. And there are no perfect live performances. So that's very acceptable. Mm -hmm. 
when you're there and you're in person, and that's the only way you see it. But I think when you make a movie uh, or anything is as indelible as a movie, whether it be television or whatever, it's seen by the public through a microscope, almost a one-on-one. -on -one. And my big problems were, were casting and some of the original ideas that we had put forth for the movie that were supposed to be in, that were not in. So I never even went to the premiere, neither did Bob Godio. I remember you told me that you thought it's tough to box in your life in a two hour movie because right. there's so many other things that happened. You told me that it would have to be like a series. Well, I always thought it was a series before I thought it was a movie anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe very strongly in series, uh, and, and not that I know so much about the differences, but I, I do know that, you know, the longest running series on television have been there from the beginning of television, and that's the soaps. Mm -hmm. Now, what keeps the soaps going? Well, I can answer that, but I don't know if I should. <laughs> no, well, I, I, it's a sex I, think, I think what keeps the soaps going is the fact that it ends and you're left at the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen when you turn it on next week or tomorrow or whatever. And that's what series are. Series are a series of vignettes. There's nothing that lasts in a series. There isn't a scene that lasts for more than a minute or two, and then they go someplace totally different. So it's a different approach, totally. Mm -hmm. I think it's easier for an actor to do a series than it was in the day uh, of, of some of the great actors in classic movies where scenes could be 15 minutes. I mean, that's an awful lot of dialogue to remember. And a two or three minute period would be a whole lot easier. Now, how I come to this conclusion is that I've learned that in, in soaps, when they make soaps, most of these actors have about 80 pages to learn a day. They are still learning their dialogue as they're shooting. They get a break from this two minute or three minute that they were in. And it, whether it's a commercial or it goes to another scene and they go over what they have coming up next. So, <laughs> you know, that, that's you what- You could do it, you have an work. incredible memory. I, and I don't know of anybody, but it has to be in, in, back in the day, they, they must have had incredible memories. You still do. Well, I, I know a lot of songs, and, and especially songs that I really love. Uh, I pretty well know the lyric to maybe two or 3,000 songs. Let's talk about two of those songs. My personal favorite, which I still get upset with you about because you don't perform it on stage. What's that? Big Man in Town. Big Man in Town is special to me because that's my song with my dad. For whatever reason, it just well, is. Well, uh, maybe what I try to do with the show is do uh, the most popular. That doesn't mean that some of the other songs were not favorites of mine. Big Man in Town happens to be one of my favorites. Oh, it's amazing. I, lo I love the storyline to Big Man in Town. Tell the storyline to Big Man in Town. Well, the, the storyline to, to Big Man in Town is a guy that's really trying to do it, and, and, and her family is totally 
uh, against this kind of guy. Uh, he doesn't have anything. And he's saying, don't worry, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it. I'll get there. Someday you'll see. You'll be proud of me. So I, there's something to that for me because of the way I grew up with not having very much. Yeah, it rings true So for I you. have a greater appreciation than someone who might have uh, been born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Or it, it, it's like today's world is so much different than from when I grew up. I think it's much harder on kids today than it was when I was a kid. It is. Because in most cases, families have tried to give their children and these times a better life to get a better education for them. Uh, when I was growing up as a kid, you got out of high school and you went right to work, and that's what it was. Now, a kid who comes from a successful background has a tougher time. I know that sounds crazy, unless he's funded by his parents all the way through life until he becomes successful, if he ever does become successful. So, how do you tell your kid at 18 years old, who has just begun life in reality, okay, now you're 18, now pack your stuff, get out, go find a place to live. When you, in, in most major cities of the country, you can't find an apartment for under 2,500 or 3,000 a month. So now this kid who grew up with everything, with housekeepers and, and chefs and people that drove them to school and all of that, they're lost. They are. You think it's That's like a, a lot it, of kids are a moving. lack of ambition? No, I don't think it's that. I, I don't think it's a lack of ambition. I think to them it's a, it's a reality to look and say, how am I ever going to achieve that which my father or my mother or my parents have achieved or accomplished. I almost don't have a shot in the world. I'm, I'm really starting from nothing. And they have all of this. Now, if they came from a family that were average people, and dad went to work and he had a nine to five job and mom took care of the kids and did a little part-time something, and they struggled, mm -hmm. Then it would give more incentive because the kid would say, there's got to be more than this, or I want more than this. What can I do? How can I escalate my life to becoming more successful, to have more, to be able to give my children more? We all make that mistake of wanting to give our children more. It's better to have our children more. Fight for and earn more. I agree. It's better for them. I agree. Who is Frankie Valley when you are on tour? When I'm where? When you're on tour. Who are you on tour? I'm the same guy that I am in life. I mean, I I, I don't change very much. I just. I believe that I'm who I am, and I shouldn't pretend to be something that I'm not, or think that I'm more than I am. I mean, we're all here, and there are a lot of things that I have learned to realize in life. Regardless of what your accomplishments in life are, we leave this earth the way we came in, with nothing. Exactly the same way. You can't take any of what you've done here, your worldly goods and all of that, with you. It's just so stuff. You go out exactly the way you come, came in, with nothing. With nothing. So it's when what you, do you go, think when you of go yourself off tour. and how proud do you want to be of what you do and your accomplishments? What do you think, uh, or how much? understanding do you want to give to those who may not uh, be doing as well as you are? Uh, how much do you care? And I'm a very strong believer that charity begins at home. 
one hundred percent it does. You know, I think that that's really a very important key in life that it does begin at home. I mean, before you start taking care of the world, you you should really take care of what's right there in front of you that needs to be taken care of. That's true. When you come off tour, what do you do? Because you don't really have a lot of I go home hobbies. and I'm on vacation. You're on vacation. Wait, let's talk about the... <laughs> <laughs> That's my vacation time. That's your vacation time. Okay, so we talked about two years ago, you said to me, Meredith, I want to I get a farm. Do you remember I that? I still do, yeah. You want a ca and I said, if you get a farm and you get cows... I am coming over and I'm milking a cow. Okay. He's on a bucket list of mine. All right, okay. <laughs> so when when we get in this I don't farm, know if I'm going to get cows. I mean, you know, I might have some horses. Maybe and, just one. And some other animals. Uh, Chickens. But, uh, you know, dogs and cats and all of that. I, I think people who have animals who live in, in confined or restricted situations, and the animal never really leaves one or two rooms. I, I don't want any animals that way. No. You know, I, I don't, I wouldn't want to be in prison and I wouldn't want to do that to an animal. Mm -hmm. When, all right, let's talk about, let's talk about that because we just, we just transitioned into, into prison. When you guys got put in jail because of Tommy. What about it? What were your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, we really didn't understand why we were put in jail because we had a manager who was supposed to be paying all the bills through an accountant, and he just wasn't doing that. So uh, it was quite shocking. I mean, it wasn't for long. I mean, we didn't go out bail or any of that. Uh, although there were other members of, of the Four Seasons who had spent time in prison, yeah. so for them it was, it was old a hat walk to in them. the park. Speaking of people from your past, this is a this is a Bob G question. He said you do incredible impressions of Joe Pesci, Al Martino, and Jerry Vale. Can you still do oh, those? I, I, don't, I haven't done any of those in so long. He I said that is Robbie a way to test too. Did Robbie Dangerfield. Right. He said that's a way to test him. <laughs> Have him do an impression. <laughs> I, I haven't done an impression in so many years. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, well, you think about that maybe at the end. Maybe he'll give us a little one. <laughs> well, Twin he get no respect at all. I mean, if you want to be Rodney Dangerfield. He gets no respect at all, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's good. That's good. You have twins. Yes, I do. I have twins. Were you a very involved parent? I really have four. You, you have, no, you have, you have four. I have two sets of twins. You have two sets of twins? Yeah, they're Gemini by kids, so that's, each one is two. Each one is two, there you go. <laughs> You're splitting them up for me. Very difficult. You know, Gemini is a tough sign. I, I, I love my kids to death. When is their birthday? Uh, June the 29th. June 29th, okay. Mine are October 13th. We just turned 11. What sign are they? Oh, I should know this. This is bad. Libra? Virgo? October 29th. October 13th. 13th. They were born on Friday the 13th. Uh, I was just wondering if maybe they might be... Virgo? A Scorpio. Is no, Scorp Scorpio's, Scorpio's my mom, December. No, Scorpio's uh, is... And maybe I'm, I'm all mix, mixed up with this stuff. Part of October, I think, in November. Dean, we need help. When When is October 13th? Libra or Virgo? Oh, no clue. <laughs> Dean's gonna, Dean's gonna be on a mission right now. Right. Um, so, so being a twin parent, you know, it, it takes a special person to be a twin parent. And what was life like for you when those babies came? Because you had already had, well, you had other children, but two, two at a time. Came. Oh yeah. yes, it was it was a shock. Uh, having kids is a lot of work. I mean, you know, a lot of people uh, 
make like it isn't. Uh, the amazing thing about having kids is that no matter how old they are, they're still your kids. Sure. You know, so, and, and there's that kind of mentality. No matter what you think, uh, Did you find it? Libra. 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 Yeah. I don't know much about their sign. I guess maybe I, I should uh, buck up on being a good twin mom and learn about their sign. <laughs> or do it like you did about radio. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just kind of wing it. All right. Figure it out as I go along. I walked into my dad's office last week, and sitting on his desk was the October 2016 release of Tis the Seasons from Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Was this your first holiday album that you put out last year? Is this your first one ever? No, no, this is the second one. We put one out as the Four Seasons. And this one I put out as Frankie Valley. You know, I'm the biggest Christmas music loving Jew you will ever meet oh, in really? your life. Well, you know, it's, it's not overly religious. It's, it's not what our intent was, although, there were a, a, a couple of songs that kind of lean in, lean uh, in that direction that we could really do great productions on that were a little different. They're always fun to do, yeah. aren't they? Oh, yeah. It, it I mean, is fun. it a different vibe when you go into the studio to record a, a holiday album because it's just peppy? I don't know, you know. I mean, some of those songs I, I've known... I've been singing for so many years. It's always a challenge when you're doing music that someone else has done to try to put a different flavor on it mm -hmm. uh, or to make it yours. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's always a challenge. And, uh, well, you always said you wouldn't touch anybody else's album if you couldn't put your own spin on it. Right. and make it different well uh, you know that that's been the rule of thumb as far as i'm concerned with the recording business uh, i don't think i i'm not that big on on copycat records although there have been uh, a couple in the years that i was recording with with crew that were insisted upon by the producer i mean that was really the bottom line. But I, I don't like to uh, do anything that I can't give another, another color to, so to speak. Would you consider doing a holiday concert special just for that CD? I'm not sure I would. I, I'm, I'm not even sure that... that uh, that the broad public would embrace that. I, you know, it's. I know why they come to see us. They want to hear the song. They want to hear the classics. Do, and, and that's, uh, you know, if I want to get in the business of making music for myself, that's something else. Uh, that's not what I do. And I, my great enjoyment is being able to perform for an audience and give them what they want, and it's okay to throw something that's unexpected in occasionally, mm -hmm. but don't overdo it. I think, I personally think, regardless of who it is, if you were doing a concert and you announced that, let's say, Billy Joel, he says, I'm doing a concert and I'm not doing any of my hits, I'm doing all brand new material. I'm not too, too sure. That they wouldn't that take many. all of that, yeah. No, I don't think that many people. They said, well, no, I wanted to see him when he was there. I'll wait till he does. He said, I went to see Hart in Baltimore, and they did probably two of their hits, and the rest they did Led Zeppelin, and I was pretty darn disappointed. They did them well. It's just there were some songs that I really wanted to see performed. Did they do them exactly like Led Zeppelin? No, they put their own spin on it, which was cool, and I... I admired them for that, but the rest of the audience, you know, didn't understand. They thought, are we at a heart concert or are we at a Led Zeppelin well, concert? Well, the next time around, they probably won't get it. 
a, a, a good response? They might, they might not. Yeah. Okay, you're born Francesco Castelluccio. Tell me about Valley. Well, Valley is a, is a name that, that was, it, it just came about very quickly. Uh, How? With it, well, there was a, a girl, a country singer, who actually took me on my first professional interview for management and to record. And her name was Jean Valley. And when she went to these people, she told them I was her brother. And I don't know, maybe they wouldn't have listened to me if, if, if it wasn't for that. But anyway, I did get in and I did the audition. And they loved me and they said, yeah, we want to sign you and we'll do a record deal. And Frankie Valley. Now, I wasn't old enough to sign a contract. So when my parents came in, uh, that's when the guy that was signing me found out what my real name was. He said, I thought it was, he was your brother. Well, no, he's like a brother to me. I said, well, Castelluccio, we can't use that for records. He said, we have to, just, let's keep Valley and and, Valley and at that point, I, you know, I didn't care what they called me. Were your parents supportive of that? Oh, they were always supportive. I, I, although I, I have strong feelings that my dad would have liked if I used some portion of my last name. In, Valley Uchio. Yeah. No, you know, I, it, well, I even <laughs> thought about doing an album calling it Castelluccio. And because it, 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 uh, the castle of the light is what it is, what it means. Uh, but uh, I, I never I'm surprised did. you haven't done that yet. You still have time, yeah. you know. Speaking of that. Except that, the, you know, the, there's no more record stores. I know people that would buy online? records. Online is... is that's where it is. Right. That's all or it is. Or 7-Eleven. Or 7-Eleven. <laughs> um, it, it's amazing when you see Paul McCartney's record released at Walmart. Isn't that crazy? You buy the record it's and you amazing. get a couch. It's amazing. <laughs> Wait, you buy the record and you get a washer dryer. You buy Frankie's album, you get a cow. <laughs> a trip to a farm uh, you made a comment that you guys were going to be doing this well into your 80s you want to change that now and say you're going to be doing this well into your 90s I don't know at this point do I'm you ever get thinking, tired of it yeah I'm thinking very serious I don't get tired of performing uh, the traveling I almost you know being here and doing this and being in one place for three days is so incredible. And whether I'm, I'm looking out the window of my hotel room. Or Which this is a beautiful this, hotel, by the way, right on the water in Red Bank. There's something really spectacular about getting away from everything. <coughs> this is one of the kind of towns that I would probably look for. It's a very, very cute town. I could see you here. They don't even have a mall here. They have outlets. Yeah, oh, you would love that because you like a bargain shop. No, I don't think there's any outlets. There, there. there are outlets. I saw them coming oh, in. Oh, yeah, but they're not, you have to in, go south. they're not in Red Bank. Little, little south. That's okay. Dean will drive you whenever you want to go. No, you just I, call I, Dean, I, and he'll take you down to go get I the bargains. That, that this is how it was in the old days. You know, I, I like all these, and, and, and the shopping areas here are nice, and there's a lot of restaurants. It's beautiful. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful, and it's a crisp, wonderful fall day, yeah. and I get to sit here with you, which I can't complain. All right, let's touch on how you and I came to be. You and I. 
Okay. Um, my dad in the 60s. Well, working at the Club Venus. I didn't know you yet. You were just a thought. I, I wasn't even Your a mom thought. And dad no, I wasn't mine. even a thought yet, Uncle Frank. I was not a, <laughs> not a thought yet. Club Venus on Herring Parkway in Parkville, Maryland. Tell me about the first time you saw my dad. You met I my dad. I thought it was in Towson. Parkville. Just, it's it's like. Well, the Venus was in Towson. The I... Venus, the Venus was was just north of Towson. I live in Towson. It's just north of Towson. How far is it from Parkway. Frederick? Frederick. Oh, I know why you're asking that question. Uh, Frederick, it's probably about an hour. About well, an hour. I had a, you know, there was a while I had a, 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 a band that was based out of Baltimore. And you got to hang out with Bill Bateman. Right. Which, by the way, I told him that I was coming here, and he did not send you a crab pretzel. I just want you to know, I asked him for one. Bill, you're going to get in big trouble. Bill didn't send any he, he crab didn't cakes send, or He didn't send the crab cakes. You sure they're not in the back crab. of your car? I, Bill, did you send them? I don't know. Where are you, Bill? <laughs> We're waiting. You still have time. Maybe he's driving up now. Um, so Club Venus. And you started a friendship with my dad and a business relationship with my dad. Well, that wasn't where I started the relationship with your dad. Really? You see, actually... Actually, the first sound people I ever worked with was Claire Brothers. Right. Okay. And they weren't even a company at that point. Okay. And your dad had a job with Claire Brothers, and, and he was an engineer that worked for them. And at the, at the very early times, uh, Roy would come out and he did sound for us. And then your dad got this job with him and as Roy's business began to grow your dad became my sound guy okay and I was on the road and we had some sort of a disagreement on something with the Claire Brothers and they asked your dad to leave the job and go with the Jackson 5 whatever it was I, I, anyway he said, I can't leave, just leave these guys, just walk away. Yeah. He said, I can't do that. So, he says, that I'm not going to do it. He said, well, if you don't do it, we're going to fire you. And he came to us and he said, listen, this is the situation, so forth and so on. I don't want to leave you guys. He says, and I'm not going to leave you flat, no matter what happens here. He said, but if you... Give me the front money to build a board. I'll build a board, and I have the people to do it, and this is what we'll do. And when I'm not working with you, I'll use the board to work with other people. And we said, okay, and that's how it all began. That's awesome. And that's why we have had the friendship that we have had for such a long time, I mean, you know. His loyalty was incredible. He's a not very loyal I'm, person. Not, you know, not that I, I have anything against the Claire brothers either. I mean, because we eventually, whether we worked together or not, we became good friends because we were before we had this, this little disagreement. And I could understand them wanting to take an engineer away from an act to improve their business to take on somebody who was hot at that very moment. So, you know, we all get grown up as we go along. Well, I'm going to say thank you for doing that because that allowed, selfishly, me to have you in my life and you made a huge impact on my life. Well, Growing I, up, you I, know, I've being had, around you has been I've amazing. I've had great relationships all of those people in that period of time, even some of the the players that used to play with me, I mean, and, and the band. Well, you've uh, had you Robbie know, Robertson Bateman. forever. Well, Robbie Robertson has been with me almost 40 years. He's been there forever. And Bill Deloach, you know, yeah. was... And Bill Deloach and has been he, with me. And then he came back. And not with me. And now he's me. back with you. Yeah, a few times. Yeah. It's so incredible. That, yeah. 
you have immense loyalty as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is your favorite song to perform? I don't have a favorite song. You know, I my favorite thing is music in, in, in any form that it comes. If it's singing a song, it's like children. It's like people. Uh, which are your favorite people? Uh, you, know, you can't pick just one. Exactly. It's tough. I have one more question for you. Okay. What is that moment, or have you had a moment, where you stopped and realized that you had goosebumps and that you couldn't believe that something was happening? A moment in time in your career where you thought this was unbelievable. Well, that's happened a lot of times, you know, where you stop for a moment and you realize how lucky you really have been. Uh, success is a lot of things. It, it's, it's not always talent alone. It's mm -hmm. being in the right place at the right time. Uh, the people you're surrounded with. Uh, how much time you put into what you wanted to do. Uh, you have to be relentless if you really want to be successful on a large scale. And it has to come before everything. Now really, I know that might sound cold, but it, it's... It really is, and it will, if you succeed at it, it'll make you a better person because you'll have a better understanding. So you can't feel guilty about the fact that you put this time into yourself, and it doesn't matter who you are. I mean, we go all the way back to the Michelangelo's. You know, and, and some of the, the Picassos and the great people in them, that whether they be singers or dancers or, or actors or actresses or directors or producers, they have had to do that. You need to understand why you're successful. How could you understand it? It's a, a shot and, and you become successful and now you don't even know why you were successful. How can you continue on for more success? It isn't just luck. It's a lot of things. It's hard work. It's hard work. Well, it is work, and most people don't understand that for anybody in, in, in any profession in life. Uh, in order to be successful on a major scale, it takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Anybody that thinks that it doesn't, they're just kidding themselves. It's true. Well, let's wrap it up. Say hello to everybody on Facebook. Hello there on Facebook, everybody. I love you. I love you too. Mwah. You're one of my most favorite people, and I cherish this so much. This is very special to me. Thank You're you. one of my most favorite nieces. Thank you. Love you, Uncle Frankie. <laughs> Bye, everybody.